Today marks exactly 50 years since supersonic flights soared over the continental United States, flights that cut travel time dramatically all across the globe. Since then, an FAA ban halted supersonic commercial travel over land after complaints of how disruptive and, frankly, how loud it could be for those on the ground. However, as News 5's Clay Lepard shows us, that could change with a little help from Northeast Ohio. Even during liftoff, the Concorde made its presence felt. As the first supersonic passenger airplane, it revolutionized air travel beginning in the 1960s. But no matter how much time this luxury could save for its upper crust clientele, it came with one deafening drawback. It is a nuisance. I've heard the boom a couple times in, in my life and it's extremely loud. Inside NASA Glenn Research Center's supersonic wind tunnel. This is where history starts. Peggy Cornell makes up part of the team tasked with bringing back the time we lost when the FAA shut down supersonic flight over land in 1973. An average flight from New York City to LA, for example, is approximately six hours. We could decrease the, the travel time in half. Anytime you get a chance to take time back, uh, in any kind of menial task, I think, is an advantage. Beginning in 2017, this chamber is where NASA experts started testing what will become the X-59, a second crack at a quieter supersonic airplane. But it wasn't until the 2000s that the tools and the technologies and the modeling and the simulations were developed to allow us to look at this type of shape and bring all these pieces together. It's a chamber capable of simulating a plane flying faster than the speed of sound and then some. Putting out roughly 90,000 horsepower when operating at full capacity and that can uh, generate speeds up to Mach 2. For those that don't remember, let's try to put these sounds in perspective. A sonic boom from a Concorde back in the day had about the same noise level as being inside a car when slamming a door. Step back and do the same thing about 20 feet away, and NASA says that's the difference compared to today's X-59 sonic boom. The sonic boom moving towards a sonic thump, if you will, is something that in, in a city, an urban environment like Cleveland, probably wouldn't even be able to hear it. Later this year, NASA hopes to take off and test the first flight of the X-59. After that, places like Cleveland could see this progress in its sky, with audio level testing over some not yet picked U.S. communities. This ban reaching its 50th year mark is, is not to be celebrated. We need to overcome this, and that's what we're working to do. At NASA Glenn Research Center, Clay Lepard, News 5.